Ronald Ross. Sir Ronald Ross, 13 May 1857, 16 September 1932, was a British medical doctor who received the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1902 for his work on the transmission of malaria, becoming the first British Nobel laureate and the first born outside Europe. His discovery of the malarial parasite in the gastrointestinal tract of a mosquito in 1897 proved that malaria was transmitted by mosquitoes and laid the foundation for the method of combating the disease. He was a polymath, writing a number of poems, published several novels, and composed songs. He was also an amateur artist and natural mathematician. He worked in the Indian Medical Service for 25 years. It was during his service that he made the groundbreaking medical discovery. After resigning from his service in India, he joined the faculty of Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and continued as professor and chairman of tropical medicine of the Institute for 10 years. In 1926, he became director-in-chief of the Ross Institute and Hospital for Tropical Diseases, which was established in honor of his works. He remained there until his death, early life and education. Ross was born in Almora, then in the northwestern provinces of company-ruled India, northwest of Nepal. He was the eldest of ten children of Sir Campbell Clay Grant Ross, a general in the British Indian Army, and Matilda Charlotte Elderton. At age eight, he was sent to England to live with his aunt and uncle on the Isle of Wight. He attended primary schools at Ryde, and for secondary education, he was sent to a boarding school at Spring Hill, near Southampton, in 1869. From his early childhood, he developed a passion for poetry, music, literature, and mathematics. At 14 years of age, he won a prize for mathematics, a book titled Orbs of Heaven, which sparked his interest in mathematics. In 1873, at 16, he secured first position in the Oxford and Cambridge local examination in drawing. Although he wanted to become a writer, his father arranged enrollment at St. Bartholomew's Hospital Medical College in London in 1874. Not fully committed, he spent most of his time composing music and writing poems and plays. He left in 1880. In 1879, he had passed the examinations for the Royal College of Surgeons of England, and he worked as a ship's surgeon on a transatlantic steamship while studying for the licentiate of the Society of Apothecaries. He qualified on second attempt in 1881, and after a four-month training at Army Medical School, was appointed a surgeon in the Indian Medical Service on 2 April 1881, assigned to the Madras Presidency. Between June 1888 and May 1889, he took study leave to obtain the Diploma in Public Health from the Royal College of Physicians and Royal College of Surgeons, and took a course in bacteriology under Professor E. E. Klein. Career India Ross embarked for India on 22 September 1881 on the troopship Jumma. Between 1881 and 1894, he was variously posted in Madras, Burma now Myanmar, Elakistan, and Daman Islands, Bangalore and Secunderabad. In 1883, he was posted as the acting garrison surgeon at Bangalore during which he noticed the possibility of controlling mosquitoes by limiting their access to water. In March 1894, he had his home leave and went to London with his family. On 10 April 1894, he met Sir Patrick Manson for the first time. Manson, who became Ross's mentor, introduced him to the real problems in malaria research. Manson always had a firm belief that India was the best place for the study. Ross returned to India on P and O ship Ballarat on 20 March 1895 and landed in Secunderabad on 24 April. Even before his luggage was cleared in the custom office, 
He went straight for Bombay Civil Hospital, looking for malarial patients, and started making blood films. Discovery of malaria vector causing malaria in humans. Ross made his first important step in May 1895 when he observed the early stages of malarial parasite inside a mosquito stomach. However, his enthusiasm was interrupted as he was deployed to Bangalore to investigate an outbreak of cholera. Bangalore had no regular cases of malaria. He confided to Manson, stating, I am thrown out of employment and have no work to do. But in April he had a chance to visit Sigur Gat near the hill station of Uti, where he noticed a mosquito on the wall in a peculiar posture, and for this he called it dappled winged mosquito, not knowing the species. In May 1896, he was given a short leave that enabled him to visit a malaria endemic region around Uti. In spite of his daily quinine prophylaxis, he was down with severe malaria three days after his arrival. In June, he was transferred to Secunderabad. After two years of research failure, in July 1897, he managed to culture 20 adult brown mosquitoes from collected larvae. He successfully infected the mosquitoes from a patient named Yusin Khan for a price of eight annas one and a per blood-fed mosquito. After blood feeding, he dissected the mosquitoes. On 20 August, he confirmed the presence of the malarial parasite inside the gut of mosquito, which he originally identified as dappled wings, which turned out to be species of the genus Anopheles. The next day, on 21 August, he confirmed the growth of the parasite in the mosquito. This discovery was published on 27 August 1897 in the Indian Medical Gazette and subsequently in the December 1897 issue of British Medical Journal. In the evening, he composed the following poem for his discovery originally unfinished, sent to his wife on 22 August, and completed a few days later. This day relenting God. Half placed within my hand a wondrous thing, and God, be praised, at his command, seeking his secret deeds, with tears and toiling breath, I find thy cunning seeds, O million murdering death, I know this little thing, a myriad men will save, O death, where is thy sting, thy victory, O grave, discovery of malaria transmission in birds, in September 1897, Ross was transferred to Bombay, from where he was subsequently sent to a malaria-free Kurwara in Rajputana, now Rajasthan. Frustrated of lack of work, he threatened to resign from service as he felt that it was a death blow to his pursuit. It was only on the representation of Patrick Manson that the government arranged for his continued service in Calcutta on a special duty. On 17 February 1898, he arrived in Calcutta, now Kolkata, to work in the Presidency General Hospital. He immediately carried out research in malaria and visceral leishmaniasis, also known as Kala Azar, for which he was assigned. He was given the use of Surgeon Lieutenant General Cunningham's laboratory for his research. He had no success with malarial patients because they were always immediately given medication. He built a bungalow with a laboratory at Mahanad village, where he would stay from time to time to collect mosquitoes in and around the village. He employed Mahamd or Muhammad Bucks, Perbuna who deserted him after the first payday, and Kishori Mohan Bandiapadie as laboratory assistants. As Calcutta was not a malarious place, Manson persuaded him to use birds, as being used by other scientists such as Vasily Danilovsky in Russia and William George McCallum in America. Ross complied but with a complaint that he did not need to be in India to study bird malaria. By March he began to see results on bird parasites, very closely related to the human malarial parasites. Using more convenient model of birds infected sparrows, by July 1898, he established the importance of Kilex mosquitoes as intermediate hosts in avian malaria. 
On 4 July, he discovered that the salivary gland was the storage sites of malarial parasites in the mosquito. By 8 July, he was convinced that the parasites are released from the salivary gland during biting. He later demonstrated the transmission of malarial parasite from mosquitoes, in this case Kilex species, to healthy sparrows from an infected one. In September 1898, he went to southern Assam in northeast India to study an epidemic of visceral leishmaniasis. He was invited to work there by Dr. Graham Colville Ramsey, the second medical officer of the Labakti Estate Hospital. His microscope and medical tools are still preserved, and his sketches of mosquitoes are still on display at the hospital. However, he utterly failed as he believed that the Kala Azar parasite Leishmania Donovani, the very scientific name he later gave in 1903, was transmitted by a mosquito, which he refers to as Anopheles rossi. It is now known that Kala Azar is transmitted by sandflies. England. In 1899, Ross resigned from Indian Medical Service and went to England to join the faculty of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine as lecturer. He continued to work on prevention of malaria in different parts of the world, including West Africa, the Suez Canal Zone, Greece, Mauritius, Cyprus, and in the areas affected by the First World War. He also initiated organizations which proved to be well established for fighting malaria in India and Sri Lanka. In 1902, Ross was awarded the Cameron Prize for Therapeutics of the University of Edinburgh. He was appointed as Professor and Chair of Tropical Medicine of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine in 1902, which he held up to 1912. In 1912, he was appointed Physician for Tropical Diseases at King's College Hospital in London and simultaneously hold the Chair of Tropical Sanitation in Liverpool. He remained in these posts until 1917, when he became Honorary Consultant in Malariology in British War Office. He travelled to Thessaloniki and Italy in November to advise and on the way, in a landlocked bay close to the Leucadian rock where Sappho is supposed to have drowned hers, his ship escaped a torpedo attack. Between 1918 and 1926, he worked as consultant in malaria in the Ministry of Pensions and National Insurance. Ross developed mathematical models for the study of malaria epidemiology, which he initiated in his report on Mauritius in 1908. He elaborated the concept in his book The Prevention of Malaria in 1910, second edition in 1911, and further elaborated in a more generalized form in scientific papers published by the Royal Society in 1915 and 1916. Some of his epidemiology work was developed with mathematician Hilda Hudson. These papers represented a profound mathematical interest which was not confined to epidemiology, but led him to make material contributions to both pure and applied mathematics. Ross was one of the supporters of Sir William Osler in the founding of the History of Medicine Society in 1912, and in 1913 was the History of Medicine section's vice president. Ross Institute and Hospital for Tropical Diseases the Ross Institute and Hospital for Tropical Diseases was founded in 1926 and established at Bath House, a grand house with Keeper's Lodge and large grounds adjacent to Tibbet's Corner at Putney Heath. The hospital was opened by the then Prince of Wales, the future King Edward Roman VIII. Ross assumed the post of Director-in-Chief until his death. The Institute was later incorporated into the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in Keppel Street. Bath House was later demolished and mansion flats built on the property. In memory of its history and owner, the block was named Ross Court. Within the grounds, an older dwelling, Ross Cottage, remains. Nobel Prize Ronald Ross was awarded a Nobel Prize for his discovery of the life cycle of malarial parasite in birds. 
He did not build his concept of malarial transmission in humans, but in birds. Ross was the first to show that malarial parasite was transmitted by the bite of infected mosquitoes, in his case the avian Plasmodium relictum. In 1897, an Italian physician, zoologist Giovanni Battista Grassi, along with his colleagues, had established the developmental stages of malaria parasites in anopheline mosquitoes, and they described the complete life cycles of P. falciparum, P. vivax, and P. malarii the following year. The 1902 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine was considered. The Nobel Committee initially intended the prize to be shared between Ross and Grassi. However, Ross accused Grassi of deliberate fraud. The weight of favor ultimately fell on Ross, largely due to the influences of Robert Koch, the appointed neutral arbitrator in the committee, as reported. Koch threw the full weight of his considerable authority in insisting that Grassi did not deserve the honor. Personal Life and Death Ronald Ross was noted to be eccentric and egocentric, described as an impulsive man. His professional life appeared to be in constant feud with his students, colleagues, and fellow scientists. His personal vendetta with G. B. Grassi became a legendary tale in science. He was openly envious of his mentor Patrick Manson's affluence from private practices. This was largely due to his own ineptitude to compete with other physicians. His memories of Sir Patrick Manson, 1930, was a direct attempt to belittle Manson's influences on his works on malaria. He hardly had good ties with the administration of Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, complaining of being underpaid. He resigned twice, and was eventually discharged without any pension. Ross was frequently embittered by lack of government support, what he called administrative barbarism, for scientists in medical research. In 1928, he advertised his papers for sale in Science Progress, with a statement that the money was for financial support of his wife and family. Lady Houston bought them for T.S. 2000, and offered them to the British Museum, which turned her down for various reasons. The papers are now preserved by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. In 1889, Ross married Rosa Bessie Blocks, M.D. 1931. They had two daughters, Dorothy, 1891-1947, and Sylvia, 1893-1925, and two sons, Ronald Campbell, 1895-1914, and Charles Clay, 1901-1966. His wife died in 1931. Ronald and Sylvia predeceased him, too. Ronald was killed at the Battle of Le Catau on 26 August 1914. Ross died at the hospital of his namesake after a long illness and asthma attack. He was buried at the nearby Putney Vale Cemetery, next to his wife. Legacy Ronald Ross Memorial, Calcutta A small memorial on the walls of SSKM Hospital commemorates Ross' discovery. The memorial was unveiled by Ross himself, in the presence of Lord Lytton, on 7 January 1927. The laboratory where Ross worked has been transferred into a malaria clinic named after him. There is also a plaque on the outer wall. Sir Ronald Ross is one of 23 names to feature on the frieze of London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, pioneers chosen for their contributions to public health. Books. Report on Cholera, General Sanitation, and the Sanitary Department and Regulations in the Sea, and M. Station of Bangalore, 1896. Report on the Cultivation of Protosoma Lab in Gray Mosquitoes, 1898. Digitized version available from National Library of Scotland. Report on the Nature of Kala Azar, 1899. Digitized version available from National Library of Scotland. Malarial Fever its cause, prevention, and treatment, 
containing full details for the use of travelers, sportsmen, soldiers, and residents in malarious places 1902. First Progress Report of the Campaign Against Mosquitoes, Sierra Leone with Charles Wilberforce Daniels 1902. Notes on the parasites of mosquitoes found in India between 1895 and 1899. Hygiene for Indian Scholars. Note on the bodies recently described by Leshman and Donovan 1903. Further notes on Leshman's bodies 1903. Report on Malaria at Ismailia and Suez 1903. Leshmania Donovani found in Kala Azar 1904. Researches on Malaria 1905. Note on a flagellate parasite found in Culex Fatigans 1906. Malaria in Greece 1909. Missionaries and the Campaign Against Malaria 1910. A case of sleeping sickness studied by precise enumerative methods. Regular periodical increase of the parasites disclosed with David Thompson 1910. Discussion on the Treatment of Malaria 1918 Mosquitoes and Malaria in Britain 1918 Suggestions for the Care of Malaria Patients 1919 Observations on Malaria 1919 Memoirs with a Full Account of the Great Malaria Problem and Its Solution 1923 Malaria Control in Ceylon Plantations 1926 Solid Space Algebra the Systems of Hamilton and Grassman, Bind, 1929. A Summary of Facts Regarding Malaria Suitable for Public Instruction with Malcolm Watson, 1930. Memories of Sir Patrick Manson, 1930. The Solution of Equations by Iteration with William Stott, 1930. A Priori Pathometry with Hilda Phoebe Hudson, 1931. Mosquito Brigades and How to Organize Them, ISBN 978-129055311-7. Literary Works. Ross was a prolific writer. He habitually wrote poems on most of the important events in his life. His poetic works gained him wide acclaim, and they reflect his medical service. Travelogue, Philosophical, and Scientific Thoughts. Many of his poems are collected in his Selected Poems, 1928, and in Exile, 1931. Some of his notable books are The Child of Ocean, 1899 and 1932, The Revels of Orsera, The Spirit of Storm, Fables and Satires, 1930, Lyra Majolatu, 1931, and Five Mathematical Works, 1929-1931. He also compiled an extensive account the prevention of malaria in 1910 and another studies on malaria, 1928. He published his autobiography memoirs with a full account of the great malaria problem and its solution 547 pages long in 1923. He carefully saved virtually everything about himself, correspondence, telegrams, newspaper cuttings, drafts of published and unpublished material, and all manner of ephemera. Awards and Recognition Ronald Ross was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1902 for his work on malaria, by which he has shown how it enters the organism and thereby has laid the foundation for successful research on this disease and methods of combating it. 20 August is celebrated by London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine as World Mosquito Day to commemorate Ross's discovery in 1897. Additionally, Ross's name, along with 22 other pioneers of public health and tropical medicine, appears on the school's frieze. The papers of Sir Ronald Ross are now preserved by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society FRS, 1901, and of the Royal College of Surgeons in the same year. He was appointed Vice President of the Royal Society from 1911 to 1913.
In 1902, he was appointed a companion of the Most Honorable Order of the Bath by King Edward Roman VII. In 1911, he was promoted to the rank of Knight Commander of the same order. He was also decorated with the title Officer of the Order of Leopold Roman II of Belgium. Ross received honorary membership of learned societies of most countries in Europe and elsewhere. He got an honorary M.D. degree in Stockholm in 1910 at the centenary celebration of the Caroline Institute, and his 1923 autobiography memoirs was awarded that year's James Tate Black Memorial Prize. While his vivacity and single-minded search for truth caused friction with some people, he enjoyed a vast circle of friends in Europe, Asia, and the United States, who respected him for his personality as well as for his genius. In India, Ross is remembered with great respect as a result of his work on malaria, the deadly epidemic which used to claim thousands of lives every year. There are roads named after him in many Indian towns and cities. In Calcutta, the road linking Presidency General Hospital with Kitapur Road has been renamed after him as Sir Ronald Ross Sarani. Earlier, this road was known as Hospital Road. In his memory, the Regional Infectious Disease Hospital at Hyderabad was named Sir Ronald Ross Institute of Tropical and Communicable Diseases. The building where he worked and actually discovered the malarial parasite, located in Secunderabad near the Begumpet Airport, is a declared a heritage site and the road leading up to the building is named Sir Ronald Ross Road. In Ludhiana, Christian Medical College has named its hostel as Ross Hostel. The young medics often refer to themselves as Rossians. The University of Surrey, UK, has named a road after him in its Manor Park residences. Ronald Ross Primary School near Wimbledon Common is named after him. The school's crest includes a mosquito in one quarter. Sir Ronald Ross Institute of Parasitology was established in memory of Ronald Ross in Hyderabad, under Osmania University. In 2010, the University of Liverpool named its new biological science building the Ronald Ross Building in his honor. His grandson David Ross inaugurated it. The building is home to the university's facility for the Institute of Infection and Global Health.